going on guys? This is a video I had planned on making a couple of weeks ago. I put a, a poll up on the community tab and you guys voted for a state of collection video instead. It's usually a video I make at the very end of the year or the beginning of the following year. But since you guys wanted that first, I moved it up postpone this video and that's what we're doing today it is the week before christmas i hope you guys are having an awesome week i hope you guys have a wonderful christmas this is probably the last time you will see or hear from me until after christmas but rest assured we'll have plenty of videos coming down after that and also more podcast uploads although i haven't uploaded on the podcast in a little while planning on putting one of those out today as well. So check that out. I'll have a link below to that podcast as well as all the links to everything like t-shirts, like mugs. If you guys want a mug like this one, uh, they are now up on the store once again. I got the watch we're talking about today from a gentleman off of Chrono24, the first generation Planet Ocean. First originating in 2005. God, has it been that long, guys? First originating in 2005. Still going strong to this day. A lot of changes. We're going to talk about some of those changes, but primarily talk about the first generation. Why I went with the first generation. What I think of it now that I've had it for about a month. I hope that will sound good to you. I hope you'll stick around till the end because I do have some cool stuff coming. So... We'll just see you in just a second. All right, so the Planet Ocean 2500, I had purchased a Speedmaster Professional from 2017 off of a good friend of mine that I was joking around with. I happened to mention that he should sell me the Speedmaster. He said he was never going to sell it. In the course of the conversation, he ended up selling me this Speedmaster. So it was money I didn't plan on spending. It was money I had allotted for a Planet Ocean. And then I ended up spending that money and not having the Planet Ocean money, so I thought. But then this one popped up on Chrono24, reached out to the seller, and... Uh, Really nice guy, really good guy from Michigan, uh, doctor up there. He has a nice watch collection. He was trying to sort of downgrade the collection, something that I've tried to do this year. Too many pieces, not enough getting worn. He was letting this one go. It's in fantastic condition. Uh, we talked back and forth and uh, made a purchase of yet another watch in 2022 that I had not planned on making. So we're going to look at that watch today, both inside and outside, and I'll get you some loom shots as well. So this is a box from Crown and Caliber. This watch was purchased from Crown and Caliber, uh, pre-owned, and it still has the Crown and Caliber certification, still has the Crown and Caliber warranty, and I ended up getting it off of a gentleman, like I said, from Chrono24. Beautiful piece. This is the 42 millimeter. This one from approximately 2008. They made this version uh, beginning in 2005. They created it for a couple of years and then updated it with a slightly different design bezel, slightly different design case, and then upgraded the movement slightly to an 8500. This is the caliber 2500 movement. It is my favorite movement for the Planet Ocean. All the Planet Oceans up until the Ultra Deep have been 600 meter watches. This is the same watch that would have been seen in Casino Royale worn by James Bond, except that one would have been the black bezel with silver indices. This aesthetic harkens back to the vintage 300 meter line, the uh, Seamaster 300. This Planet Ocean is a Seamaster. It holds true to the Seamasters of old, 
but this one now 600 meters instead of the past 100, 200, 300 meter watches. So this one, 600 meters, water resistant, screw down uh, crown with hacking, helium escape valve up toward 11 o'clock to release helium when you do those deep saturation dives, something I will never ever be doing. In fact, I haven't even had this one in the rain yet. We'll take it in the pool, we'll take it in the lake, we'll take it in the ocean, but for now, it's just a desk diver of sorts. At the time, they offered a 42 millimeter on a 20 millimeter bracelet or strap or combination thereof, and they offered a 45 millimeter on a 22 millimeter with bracelet or rubber strap. I actually saw the planet ocean in a window uh, when I was looking for an engagement ring. Went to a number of jewelry retailers, including Tiffany & Co. The Tiffany & Co. is in a large mall in Nashville, uh, ours is. And as I was leaving directly across the mall at the time was an Omega boutique. They have since moved down the hall, but exiting the Tiffany & Co. You could see the Omega Boutique's side windows and in those windows were some of these photos I'll post now. And uh, I don't know why I took a photo of them. I just, I thought they were very cool. Maybe it was the orange and the Tennessee connection. Maybe it was just because I had never seen watches so beautiful. I don't know, but I couldn't get them out of my mind. I went back to the car. I Googled orange Omega watch and I was like, no, that will, that will never be me. Sits nicely on the wrist. One of the reasons I like the 2500 caliber iteration of the Planet Ocean is it is thinner and sits closer to the wrist, both on the bracelet, on a NATO, and on rubber. And I should say, I do have a genuine Omega rubber from that age on the way. You can still buy them from Omega Boutiques. You can still buy them from uh, retailers that have Omega parts accounts and I have one on the way. Um, I did opt for orange, although you can get black with orange stitching. You can get other colors as well. I probably will end up with the black with orange stitching, but these are around $350 just for the rubber. So I was able to get one much cheaper than that, but just saying it's going to be a while before I add to that. That's not including the clasp. The clasp is another 350 or so, but luckily I already have a deployant clasp that will work for this Planet Ocean strap. So shouldn't be an issue there. Back to the watch, anti-reflective coating on the top and inside of the crystal. You can see maybe one or two little micro scratches on the crystal not very many uh, 120 click rotating bezel this is unidirectional only goes one way so you can lose the time that you're timing you can't gain the time so if you're actually diving you will never run out of air you will only come up with too much same as most dive watches an illuminated pip at 12 uh, illuminated hands uh, arrow hands and indices and a illuminated pointer on the second hand tipped in bright orange to match the bezel. This bezel is aluminum. It's painted uh, aluminum with black markers, so it is not illuminated and it will fade over time. I've seen these in every sort of iteration from scratched and dinged up to perfect condition or really, really light fades. This is uh, 316L surgical steel and the clasp does have a very nice dive deployant. I like the thin elongated clasps. There's something really classic about it. I like that they say Planet Ocean on the clasp instead of these days just saying Omega Seamaster. Non-display case back. Uh, they didn't add the display case back until version two or three this one being version one it has the iconic now iconic omega seamaster 
hippocampus or seahorse. Really cool. One of the things I actually really like about this generation planet ocean. I don't know what it is about display case effects. I like them, but I feel like everyone is doing them. So now a solid case back catches my attention more than it previously would have. Much like a display case back caught my attention when they were just starting to be the thing. 42 millimeter in width uh, with a 20 millimeter bracelet. This bracelet does taper to 18 millimeters, but it is very slow to taper. And so it is not obvious. It almost feels like a no taper bracelet. Date at three turns right at 12 o'clock like it should. Uh, bezel lines up right at 12 o'clock like it should. My experience with Chrono 24 and by association, Crown and Caliber was very good. My experience with the seller, amazing. Uh, again, I hope you like your mug. It's just a little thank you from me to you saying I love the watch. I will cherish it. I will take care of it and it will never ever leave my collection. And if you haven't seen my collection, I do have a link below to the state of the collection that was put out a couple of days ago. A um, lot of changes, a lot of Omegas now, and a lot of Casios and G-Shocks. So uh, really changed over the last few years. Um, I like it. I want to add a 300 to go with this Planet Ocean. I think a Bond Era 300 would match nicely with the two watches I have bought at the tail end of 22, and that's on the horizon for 2023. So look out for that, as well as I want to add a watch from my friend Cameron over at Weiss Watch Company. I haven't decided which one I want yet. Um, I definitely eventually want one of the field watches and one of the divers. I'm pretty sure I will get a yellow dial diver. I have not yet decided which of the field watches that I'm going to eventually do. We'll just see. Uh, I haven't really talked to him about when the next run of limited editions will be, but um, definitely a Weiss watch or two and a 300 Seamaster from Omega are on the horizon for 2023. So I hope you guys will stop on back. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Please turn on that notification. It costs nothing. It helps people like Cameron see that the channel is being viewed and would be a benefit from them to allow me to do things like that watch tour from a few weeks back and I'll link that in the description as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this first look at the Planet Ocean Caliber 2500. I have enjoyed making it as I've enjoyed wearing it. I love this thing. I wish you guys all the best and until the end of 2022, peace.